Welcome to our Hong Kong Brief Program. Today, we dive into Hong Kong's exciting initiative aimed at becoming Asia's premier destination for international students. The government is pushing the study in Hong Kong brand, focusing on creating a welcoming environment for students from around the world. With plans to enhance multicultural experiences, recruit top-notch academics, and tackle the high cost of living, it's an exciting time for education in Hong Kong. In other news, the Tokyo International Film Festival has made headlines as the Japanese film Teki Cometh clinches the prestigious Tokyo Grand Prix for the first time in 20 years. Directed by Daihachi Yoshida, this touching story about a widower's journey has not only won the top prize, but also accolades for Best Director and Best Actor. The festival showcased a total of 208 films, emphasizing inclusivity and globalization in cinema. Finally, if you're in Hong Kong this weekend, you're in for a treat. From the musical Jen Last Addressing Climate Change to the India by the Bay Festival Celebrating Indian Culture, there's something for everyone. Don't miss out on the immersive art experiences and the choral concerts featuring the Prague Philharmonic Choir. Please continue to watch for more detailed coverage. South China Morning Post highlights Hong Kong's initiative to become Asia's world city for students through the study in Hong Kong brand. The government is urged to prioritize the well-being of prospective students by focusing on three key areas, fostering internationalization in universities, recruiting eminent scholars, and addressing the high cost of living. By relaxing public university quotas for non-local students and funding outreach events, Hong Kong can attract a diverse student body. Additionally, providing affordable housing for professors and implementing a student discount scheme could enhance the city's appeal, ensuring that it becomes a thriving hub for international education. Nikkei Asia reports on a significant achievement at the 37th Tokyo International Film Festival, where the Japanese film Teki Cometh won the grand prize for the first time in nearly two decades. Directed by Daihachi Yoshida, the film garnered multiple awards, including Best Director and Best Actor for Kyozo Nagatsuka. The festival emphasized globalization and inclusivity, featuring a new women's empowerment section aimed at amplifying female voices in the industry. With over 2,000 submissions from 110 countries, the festival showcased a diverse range of films, reflecting the evolving landscape of cinema and the importance of representation. In another piece from South China Morning Post, readers are invited to explore a vibrant array of performances and art shows in Hong Kong over the weekend of November 8 to 10. Highlights include Jin Last, an original musical set in a post-apocalyptic future, and a 360-degree immersive presentation of a monumental painting depicting the Battle of Merton. Additionally, the festival India by the Bay celebrates Indian arts and culture, featuring renowned speakers and performers. The Hong Kong Philharmonic Orchestra also presents choral concerts, showcasing Dvorak's work alongside African-American spirituals, providing a rich cultural experience for attendees. South China Morning Post reports that Standard Chartered Hong Kong's priority private service is redefining the banking experience for affluent clients by blending wealth management with lifestyle enrichment. Celebrating its fifth anniversary, the bank has launched a master series of exclusive events that feature industry experts covering a variety of topics such as health, wellness, and entrepreneurship. Recent highlights include a wine tasting led by actress-turned-winemaker Bernice Liu and an inspiring talk by Olympic medalist Sara Lee about her journey to the Olympics. The bank is also focused on nurturing the next generation of clients through programs like the Young Entrepreneur Initiative in collaboration with INSED, offering hands-on experiences to foster innovation and business acumen. In another report, the South China Morning Post highlights the impact of Donald Trump's recent election win on Hong Kong's stock market, particularly concerning electric vehicle manufacturers and exporters. On concerns that Trump's presidency could escalate trade tensions with China, the Hang Seng Index saw a decline, with significant drops in stocks of companies like Geely Auto and BYD. 
analysts predict that Trump's administration may impose high tariffs on Chinese goods, increasing uncertainty for the Chinese market. Despite the losses, there is cautious optimism that China may implement fiscal stimulus to mitigate potential economic fallout, while other Asian markets also experience declines in response to the news. The South China Morning Post also discusses the rising trend of vertical schools in densely populated Asian cities like Singapore, where land scarcity necessitates innovative architectural solutions. Schools like Temasek Junior College and Anderson Serangoon JC are set to transition to multi-story campuses, with designs that maximize space efficiency. Experts argue that high-rise educational facilities not only address land limitations but also free up ground space for other uses. While the initial construction costs are higher, they are offset by long-term benefits such as reduced land expenditure. The article highlights the importance of incorporating green spaces within these vertical structures to enhance student well-being, showcasing that thoughtful design can create a nurturing environment even in urban settings. South China Morning Post reports that the Hong Kong Observatory is likely to issue a number one standby signal for Typhoon Inching as it intensifies into a super typhoon. The typhoon is expected to approach within 800 kilometers of Hong Kong, prompting the observatory to monitor its movement closely. With winds expected to pick up over the weekend, the forecaster notes that despite Inching's relatively small circulation, the combination of the northeast monsoon and the typhoon will create windy conditions along the southern China coast. As residents brace for potential weather changes, Thursday's weather remains fine and dry, with temperatures ranging from 22 to 27 degrees Celsius. The last November typhoon signal was issued in 2022 for Storm Nalgi, which marked a significant weather event in the region. South China Morning Post also highlights the poignant themes explored in The Last Dance, a film that delves into the complexities of family relationships set against the backdrop of Hong Kong's funeral industry. The film features Dao Wang and Michael Hui in dramatic roles, showcasing Wang as Dominic, a wedding planner turned funeral agent grappling with personal and professional turmoil. As he navigates the challenges of a morbid business, he finds himself at odds with his stern business partner, Master Man, played by Hui. The film poignantly addresses issues of family responsibility and cultural expectations, particularly through the lens of women's empowerment, as it portrays the struggles of man's daughter Ute against her father's traditional views. The narrative is enriched by strong performances and a screenplay that raises existential questions without veering into sentimentality. Associated Press reports on the retreat of Asian shares following Donald Trump's electoral victory as investors react to potential economic implications. The U.S. stock market had a robust performance, with major indexes reaching record highs, driven by expectations of Trump's economic policies, including significant tariffs on Chinese imports. This has raised concerns about trade wars and inflation, particularly as markets anticipate the Federal Reserve's decision on interest rates. In Asia, shares in Japan, South Korea, and Hong Kong experienced declines, reflecting investor uncertainty about the future economic landscape. The report also notes the potential impact of Trump's policies on inflation and employment, which could lead to higher costs for consumers and businesses alike, while the Fed's upcoming interest rate decision remains a focal point for market watchers. South China Morning Post reports that Hong Kong is bracing for economic challenges as Donald Trump returns to the presidency, potentially leading to increased tariffs on Chinese goods. Experts suggest that while the immediate impact could be painful, businesses in Hong Kong are largely prepared, having anticipated such developments. Notably, economist Chen Jiwu posits that the geopolitical uncertainty may compel Beijing to focus more on economic growth, possibly benefiting Hong Kong in the long run. Despite concerns about Trump's aggressive stance, 
there are hopes that his transactional approach may allow for negotiations that could mitigate the worst effects of his policies, especially given his connections with influential figures like Elon Musk. In another article from South China Morning Post, former Eastern midfielder Mark Swainston reflects on his experience playing for the Filipino club Kaya FC, noting a shift towards a faster and more physical style of football compared to his time in Hong Kong. As Kaya prepares to face Eastern in the AFC Champions League 2, Swainston expresses excitement about returning to Hong Kong, acknowledging Eastern's strengthened lineup since his departure. Despite the increased competitiveness in the league, he remains optimistic about Kaya's ability to compete, emphasizing the challenges posed by higher standards in this season's tournament. Dell Technologies has solidified its commitment to the Chinese market by opening an AI smart solutions center in Shenzhen, as reported by South China Morning Post. This center aims to assist enterprises in their AI transformation by providing upgraded infrastructure and applications designed for AI PCs. With a focus on the Greater Bay Area, Dell is leveraging its extensive experience in various industries to meet the growing demand for AI capabilities. Despite previous reports about shifting supply chains, Dell maintains its presence in China, celebrating its 25th anniversary in the country while navigating the evolving landscape of global AI hardware demand. South China Morning Post reports that Hong Kong's dining culture has shifted dramatically, with locals now opting for earlier dinners than ever before. Once bustling restaurants at 8 p.m. are now eerily quiet by 9 p.m., as many diners prefer to finish their meals by 8 p.m. The pandemic has played a significant role in altering these habits, with curfews and restaurant closures leading people to adapt to earlier dining schedules. Factors such as health trends like intermittent fasting and the flexibility of working from home have also contributed to this change, as individuals can now enjoy meals without the constraints of traditional office hours. The once vibrant late-night dining scene is fading, leaving a stark contrast to the city's previous reputation as a 24-hour metropolis. In another poignant narrative, South China Morning Post highlights the resilience of Israeli filmmaker Shaley Attery, who has turned her trauma into art through her films. After surviving a severe car accident and the harrowing loss of her husband during a Hamas-led attack, Attery has found healing in storytelling. Her latest work, Single Light, emphasizes the importance of friendship in overcoming darkness, showcasing her journey of reclaiming control over her narrative. As she prepares to screen her film at the Hong Kong Jewish Film Festival, Attery reflects on how art has provided her a sense of purpose and connection, especially in the wake of personal tragedy. The festival, now in its 25th edition, features a diverse array of films that celebrate Jewish culture and identity, further amplifying the significance of Attery's work. Lastly, the South China Morning Post covers the IABHK C24 conference, which has positioned Hong Kong as a leading marketing capital through innovation and cultural synergy. With over 1,100 marketing professionals in attendance, the conference focused on the transformative impact of artificial intelligence in the industry. Key industry leaders shared insights on leveraging AI to enhance customer engagement and drive business growth, reinforcing Hong Kong's unique role at the intersection of Eastern and Western marketing practices. The event not only showcased local talent and technological advancements, but also emphasized the city's potential as a hub for future marketing innovations, setting a new benchmark for global marketing events. As the industry evolves, Hong Kong remains at the forefront, ready to embrace the opportunities presented by AI and collaborative efforts. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. 
Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 dobriefcom Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.